Drunk, I could not see. Got tangled up in the old door mat, fell flat as I could be. Well, I had me a little old jug of wine, and I didn't have any more. Cap flew off when I went down, and I spilled it on the floor. Well, a rat came out of his hiding place, he got that whiskey scent. Well, the Roosevelt Arts Project, um, you know, kind of came together with a small group of artists in town, including Jacob Landau, Bernarda, Bryson, Sean. Uh, they were they were certainly Jacob. Jacob had this idea. Jacob Landau, the artist, had this idea that uh, you know, sort of like a a uh, fantasy of having a salon <laughs> in town. And uh, so we get together and discuss a lot of things. But what it evolved into then was saying, okay, let's, let's get the work of artists in town, at least out to their neighbors, and let's encourage the collaborations because that's what Roosevelt was all about when you have musicians and potters and poets and playwrights and novelists and all those. Uh, what makes Roosevelt special is the fact that it's a real community. It isn't simply a suburb or an anonymous place. It has a history, it has connection, people, particularly those in the arts project, um, work together to collaborate and create terrific events. This has been going on for, I think, 28 years. And it's a small group of 18 people who are the core. A number of years ago, the Newark Museum uh, was coming on a, uh, to go on a studio tour, uh, which was happening that year. And um, since my house is so small and I had the studio in the house at the time, I could only bring in half of the 50 people that came in on the bus. So the tour bus arrives, there's 50 people. I send uh, people into the house and then the people that are waiting outside so they're not disappointed and are frustrated, I told them the story about the fig tree that grows um, on the way into my house. And the story is that uh, our old friend, our late and uh, beloved Saul Libson, the wonderful photographer, uh, one day when we were newly moved in here said, would you like to grow a fig tree? And I said, I didn't know we could grow fig trees here. And he was like, sure, I have one. I'll give you a cutting. And planted it and the fig tree is growing to this day uh, next to our doorway going into the house. For the group that was waiting outside, uh, waiting to go in to see my studio, I told them that, uh, please take a look at this fig tree. I told them the story about Saul giving me the fig tree, growing the cutting and turns out that Saul had gotten his cutting for his fig tree that he had for many years from the artist Ben Sean. Yonder there's a man a come and bless his poor heart son. His head's all empty, his bread is just not done. But look at that old mule here, the one with the one lamp there. He's about half blind, but there's work in that mule head. Roosevelt, New Jersey uh, began as Jersey Homesteads. And it was a um, cooperative community developed in 1933, part of the New Deal Initiative. And it was an alternate for people to get out of the um, urban environment they were living in. And it was developed as an agricultural community that also had factories along with the farms and some retail. And it was thought to be a community um, that everything you needed in the community, a sort of a, not quite a utopian community, but that kind of community, a plan, what we now consider a planned community where everything is is all in one place. And it, again, was called Jersey Homesteads initially and was only changed to Roosevelt after um, Franklin Roosevelt died. So that's how it sort of came to fame. And it was one of 99 communities that were developed at the time, but it was the only one that had that mix of, of agriculture, um, manufacturing, and retail. Many members of the community were um, Jewish farm workers. Um, and they also happened to be socialist. It wasn't planned as a socialist community, although I think it was certainly planned as a Jewish community, because Ben Sean is one of my heroes, um, both socially and artistically. So I come from a, a very um, sort of a warm place. It, this is not wholly intellectual for me, talking about Ben Sean. But Sean began as an illustrator. He made his living. He was trained as a lithographer. And he, um, that's how he's making a living, you know, as, as many people need to make a living at the time. And he was a socially aware young man, and 
Um, that, that's reflected in his, in his early work, even when he began to do his own work and began to do commercial work for um, unions in particular, lots of, lots of union work. Uh, I think that Sean um, realized the power of art to, to influence and to change minds and to change the world, and he was contributing his small way to that. If you look at a, a lot of Ben Sean's work, you'll see a range of things, including very political works and very personal works. Um, Ben Sean not only did his famous series on Sacco and Vanzetti, which is based on some paintings he did early on and then revisited um, years later in prints, we also see things in, in his um, output like greeting cards. He made cards for um, Christmas cards, and, and he, he was a, a Jewish artist, but he used the, the tradition of Christmas cards to create things for family and friends. Um, he did books um, for Passover. Um, so he was a person who embraced lots of ideologies and found the good in all of them. Um, I think he was, my feeling always, having never met Ben Sean, is that he was a good and decent person, and I think that he wanted us all to rise above our least common denominator to become better, and I think he used his art to do that. I, uh, I think I was a year and a half old or something like that. 1939 I came here. End of 39, I believe. And can you... I've been told about it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't... I was a baby. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I don't and remember so it. Your, your family came. Yeah. Because... They came because, um, well, because my father had this job. He had a, a a mural commission for the when they were building this town for the school, which is still there. So um, they came here. Yeah, they, that's how they. That's there were a couple of people who were very good singers too. So they some of these people would go to each other's house and have a sort of just some kind of party or something, and um, uh, two or three of these people would sing. You know, they were very good singers, and uh, uh, singing in, in Yiddish or in Russian, you know, that was, uh, I remember that, you know. You can, that No other artists started living here until, I guess, uh, after the war, maybe in 49 or 46, 49, into that period, some other artists started moving to Roosevelt, probably because they knew my parents or they knew somebody who knew my parents and that kind of thing, so. I think around, uh, maybe the first one was uh, this photographer, Saul Libson, and um, then uh, um, Gregorio Prestepino, I think they moved here in 49. David Stone Martin was an artist who had actually um, worked with my father as an assistant on another mural thing, I think in Washington, in D.C. Yeah, Edwin Louise Roscom um, worked for the Farm Security Administration under the New Deal again. And they went out and photographed um, an awful lot of photographs in Puerto Rico where their daughter, Ani Roscoe, was born. And I'll talk about her in a minute. Um, and they were doing the same kind of things that Dorothea Lang was doing, that Ben Sean was doing his photographs, photographing um, communities, photographing the, the poverty of that time. Um, remember, this was the Depression. And they were photographing the human condition. And, and again, that's the humanist thread that I think um, is is throughout the historic artists of Roosevelt as well as the contemporary artists. I think they're dealing with it in a different way in the contemporary era, but I think that that line of humanism has run through all of them and continues to run through all of their work. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Well, my parents were both documentary photographers and worked in different organizations like the WPA or Farm Security or Standard Oil Files and, and um, they came to Roosevelt via Ben Sean who they had met I think in Washington and I'm not sure what the overlap was it might have been Farm Security um, so then they came here uh, from Puerto Rico because my father was doing educational films with Munoz Marin and they were very involved with Puerto Rico prior to moving to Roosevelt but look you know they had little kids and I guess they thought this was like a perfect place it's very you know isolated and new and um, a good place to write and because my father was also a writer but artists and writers and musicians sort of kind of came also and were part of their community it was it was normal for me to grow up in that milieu it was perfectly normal because I didn't know anything else so it sort of gave me um, confidence to be an artist, which was really a uh, rude awakening when I got into the real world. 
but um, it was, you know, it was a very exciting, stimulating environment. Lots of late night discussions and politics and art and um, they were all really interesting people. It was um, a portrayal of a Roosevelt party, not necessarily what was going on in my house, but there were very wild parties at that time. It was the 60s and 70s, and um, it was just really um, a portrait of the parties, of one type of party, I guess you could say. And um, it was really just really innocent in that I didn't know who Red Grooms was or any, any of the, the artists that sort of did caricatures of situations or people. And I came back, yeah, because it really, not so much that it was because there were artists here, but more because of its location. You know, it was sort of central to New York and Philadelphia, and it was like a perfect, convenient place to live, and I fell into a job at Michael Graves. It was, it, it sort of all fell into place by accident, which is kind of the way we go through our life, <laughs> by accident. <laughs> It was is that Michael would design his murals and for for a particular space and then he would need them painted on a large scale for example this wall here is part of Michael Graves mural so what you, you know from from a small image to a very large size I was the one who did the painting and the translating and I, the Bill and I met at Skowhegan School for Sculpture and Painting and that was up in Maine actually and uh, we were students and innocent and optimistic and all those things that are good while you're young. Uh, and it was, it, we just clicked. We, we met each other there and we spent uh, almost every day together after that. It was, it was, I think it was also mutual admiration for each other and their, on each other's art. Well, I, I, uh, I met Ani in Maine uh, this would be my last year of uh, at the Art Institute. I, I finished up my senior year, but during my senior year, every so often I'd come to, well, rarely I'd come to see Ani, who was a Tyler. And so I think it was Christmas, uh, she brought me out here. Um, and I, I thought it was pretty, pretty amazing, you know. And she, she was really uh, into it, too. She knew how special it was. I met her parents and all these people that were uh, would just kind of drop in, you know, like without calling, you know, just real casual. And, and I just remember this writer uh, stopped by and they just talked talk about all kinds of things. And I felt very welcomed and a very warm place. And I just, but I didn't know I wanted to live here. I thought I was going to go to New York. And running around the woods. I mean, there are more woods here than where I grew up. You know, I mean, this this town is like surrounded. It's like a buffer zone. It's got the Aspen Pink, and then it's got uh, back in here. We got the preserved har uh, farmland act is all around us. Well, the people were so interesting then too. Not just artists, but everybody, and they still are. People are really interesting in town. But um, I'm not here for being in an art community. I'm here because the um, the environment is is conducive to making art. It's you know fairly still isolated and remote and near the big cities and and the community itself was very warm and open and you know the friendships were were great and going into each other's homes isn't that different than when I was growing up. You just have to call ahead now. Praise the crickets who are now in our house and will be until first frost. Still your eager minds and listen to the crickets singing, singing. I don't care about astronomy, but it sure do bother me to see my loved ones turning into puppets. Another interesting 
aspect of Ruse about is it has a history in terms of photography as well. Um, Actually, how Ben Sean actually came to Roosevelt in the first time was not just for the mural. He was one of the photographers from the Works Project Administration who came to town and in the, in the school there were all these pictures taken by a number of quite famous photographers of the construction of Roosevelt and the school. Um, when we first moved here, we got to know Saul Lipson, who um, was part of Ben Sean's crowd. And is, while he's not famous to the public, is someone who's very not, we're well known in the history of photography. And he became a friend to us. One thing I love about Roosevelt and the, uh, that is that it encourages collaboration. I mean, you know, not only poets with poets and other writers, but there's a collaboration then I could work with Jacob. And then I, uh, there's a composer in town. He'd just gotten a New Jersey Council of the Arts Award. And uh, he was, you know, thinking about an opera, and so we were talking, and I thought, okay, here's a subject, and so I ended up writing a libretto for his opera, which was done in a concert version at Rush. Great fun because, you know, being a poet is a really solitary endeavor, and uh, that's why it's great for us to get, you know, it's a privilege get together like this. I love getting together like that, but it's also to be able to collaborate with you know, a painter or a composer. I mean, that's one of the glories of Roosevelt to me. We were living in Princeton and uh, looking to move. Um, and uh, I, I went to, um, drove to uh, Tom's River one day. It was a like a March day. And uh, kind of got lost on the way back, coming back to Princeton. And I came up on 571 and it, it, it looked very familiar. The, the town looked familiar. So I, I got off the main road and drove around and uh, was impressed by the, it was, it was, it was kind of ugly because it was March, so it was, black and white and no color at all and uh, you know different things lying in the front yard and the backyard um, but I was impressed with the uniformity of the architecture uh, uniformity but at the same time there were different obviously different styles of architecture from from house to house um, and then it kind of dawned on me that I grew up in near Pennington not too far from here. And when we went to the shore, the most direct route to the northern shore was 571. So we would back then get in a, a station wagon and drive 571. It was, it, was a, it was almost like a day trip because it took two or three hours to get there and two or three hours to get back. And I, I remembered that I had seen this town before, that it must have been in my childhood. And so I, uh, I went back to New Jersey and, or New, not New Jersey, went back to Princeton and said, Deirdre, I think that I found a town that we could, we could move in. It looks reasonable in terms of price for the houses and, um, it, you know, the, the, the architecture just looks really neat. It looks kind of like a, a poor person's Carmel, California, in that the, it looks like the people who designed the place really had uh, they didn't come, just come in and knock all the trees down, but they kind of nestled into the woods and every house had a big backyard and it went into the woods and it was uh, just the kind of place that really, um, it was a nice marriage between domestic housing and the woods. So you could get right out of the house and go into the woods and I like that kind of combination. Just by chance we had uh, happened upon a place uh, where people seem to have the, the same values. I looked at 